Summit Thea. I'm the owner of 311 Hair Studio and I'm also the author of Entrepreneurship 101, Turning Your Dreams Into Business. What inspired me to write this book was to just help people who are trying to get into this industry. I know when I started out, I didn't have no help. Nobody was trying to tell me nothing. So I had to research everything and, and just try to figure out what to do. And as I got into this business, it was a lot of things that I missed out on. So I had to get help from people in different fields to go back to the beginning, restructure my business and just, you know, make sure everything is good legally. So that was my main purpose of trying to do this book, just to help people so they don't have to try to just figure it out on their own or just, just stop them from making the mistakes that I made, basically. Would you say that being an entrepreneur is hard or, or difficult? Um, being an entrepreneur is not easy. Like you can say, uh, I want to do this, I want to start this business, but you really got to have a heart for it because it's a lot that goes into it. A lot of blood, sweat, and tears, a lot of late nights. <laughs> and um, you just got to make sure it's something that you love to do. You got to be prepared for, for a lot of the days where nobody's booking or nobody is buying your product. So you got to prepare for those days. So it, it takes a lot and you just got to, you know, be determined just to continue to do what you got to do. What are some of the hardest parts for you that went into you know, starting a business and, and maintaining it. It took a lot for me to get here because like I said, I started out uh, just as a hairstylist working at somebody else shop, working at somebody else shop. So I don't know, went through the phase of clientele dropping, to having to rebuild clientele, to having my own shop, to losing my own shop and having to go into somebody else shop and trying to get my money together so I can go back into my own space. And once I got there, I was just like, okay, I'm not gonna do the same things I did. <laughs> I'ma I'm going to try different things. I'ma going to do different businesses to try to stay on top. So yeah, it's, it's, it's not easy. So that, that kind of sets up my next question. Huh? What, do you feel, what do you feel it takes to be successful at, at starting a business? What it takes? <sighs> Knowing that it's something that you that you love to do, knowing that you're going to keep working hard at it and no matter what happens. And um, making sure you are organized. Making sure you're organized and making sure you're the type of person that knows how to manage your money. Because, for example, if you, you, in, you have your own building, you got overhead expenses. It's not just, okay, you working in a booth or you working in a space in somebody else's business. You taking on rent, light, water, gas, whatever comes along with it. So you got to make sure your financial state is, is intact. When people read this book, like, what would you feel is your overall message you want them to take away from? The overall message is this is what I need to do to get what I want to get done from beginning to the end. It's, it's all laid out for you. You don't have to go and research anything else step by step. What you do from the setting up your business to the paperwork to going to the city and going through the state, the state board, everything is, is there. Out of all the chapters that went into this book, which one you think will be the most impactful? Which one was the most impactful for you to write? Uh, I would say the first chapter, the first chapter is uh, where do I begin? Uh, in your beginning stages, you want to make sure that your business is structured the correct way before you get deep in business and have to redo everything over. Um, you don't want to uh, get into an LLC or get into a corporation and, and you don't know exactly what they expect of you and, and you, you don't know what they require because all that's legal paperwork and you have to have that organizing and taking and making sure you're doing everything that you're supposed to be doing. Do you feel like, based on your business structure, you know, it can affect everybody, I guess, differently, like LLCs and stuff like that? Like, what, what's one of the most common mistakes people make with being an LLC that you think? Just getting it because you see that's the thing to do. So you said everybody got an LLC, like during COVID, everybody was getting this LLC, but if you don't, research what exactly they expect of you and how you're supposed to set your business up, then it's just going to be a mess. Everything is just going to be out of place and unorganized. If you could start over, what would you do differently about your business? <sighs> if I could start over, 
I would, of course, do the research that I was doing, but I would connect with the people who really know exactly what they're doing as far as structuring a, a business. Because I got deep in the business and started working with a, a, com a certain company that's in the book. So I working with a certain company and they're like, okay, well, do you have this and do you have that? Or are you doing this? And I'm just like, I don't have that. I'm not doing that. Okay, well, we got to start over. So now everything is getting structured the, the correct way. So you might as well do it right in the beginning so you don't have to go back. Do you also feel like, you know, your journey made it what it was, you know, like, you know, whatever mistakes you may have made played a part in the kind of, you know, where you are now, like learning. Yeah, you know, like, uh, yeah, my journey definitely, right. definitely made it, made, made me get here. Mm -hmm. Because through all my mistakes and, and all the losses, like something greater came out of it. And then I can't really say the losses. I, I, I learned a lot from my situations. I learned a lot from losing my business the first time. I learned a lot from not doing everything the correct way the first time. And now I've learned so much and just know what to do. And I, I have a daughter that's coming into the business so now I can help her and, and get her to do things the correct way. So it, it all it all worked out how it's supposed to work, supposed to work out. This question right here. Well, I know they're gonna <laughs> like this question right here. <laughs> How important is money when it comes to running a business? Money is extremely important. You gotta have it because, like I said, you got overhead expenses. You got overhead expenses. You not just like I say. You did booth rent was what a hundred dollars, one hundred and fifty a week, one twenty five. Now you got a thousand plus dollar rent. $200 light bills, water bills, sky high also. So it's like you got to know how to make sure you got everything balanced out from your personal and your business. I can take care of my, my household and make sure I'm, I'm paying my rent over here. I can, it just, it all got to balance out. You can't just spend your money like crazy. Put your money to the side, write your bills down, get everything set up how it's supposed to be set up and and stack your bread, save for for a rainy day in case something happened, an emergency or something like that. Um, can a person start a business without money? You can, but it's not going to be the end result that you see somebody else. You just going to have to start at the bottom and, and work it. Like for example, with the hair salon, I started doing hair at my house. Started doing hair at the house and you work your way to the top until you you can get here. You might have to go in somebody else's shop. You might not just off rip get your own salon. You just work it until you can you do what you gotta do until you can do what you wanna do basically. Nice, nice. And that's it. So, so where can where can where can people find your book and how soon will it be available? The book is available now. Okay. <laughs> Book311hair.com. The book is available now. And when it comes to being a boss, <laughs> what's next for your business? Or what's next for you, not just the business? Ooh, what's next for me? To come from behind this chair, um, eventually retire out and do other things. Some in the industry, the cosmetology industry, and some outside the industry. You just got to stay tuned. That brings us to the end of the promo interviews. <laughs> something else you may want to mention to the people that they can be on the lookout when it comes to the book or anything else you may want to add or say or deny? Um, one thing I want to say to everybody is I appreciate all the support that you've been giving me throughout the years. Um, go ahead and get this book so you can get these businesses started. And once again, it's book311hair.com. Thank you. I appreciate you.